Good evening, Reverend Michael D. McDuffie. Thank you for another night of our Bible study. A little tired, but I'm staying committed to this hour. There's been so many things transitioning going on here in the great city of Patterson, in my ministry and in my life, but I'm staying faithful to the cause. I try to give you a Bible study at least once a week on a Wednesday night, if not seven, if not eight, if not nine, if not 10, then 11 o'clock. I want to give you about 30 minutes Bible study tonight. Get your Bibles, get your notebooks. This is not SITU. This is not my uh, night live. This is my weekly Bible study. I try to hold with all people who are just maybe seeing me for the very first time. Hello, Nefer. Hello, Ali. I want to give you a Bible study on the word Goshen, G O S. G-O-S-H-E-N, Goshen and the true meaning of revival. I want to destroy this traditional idea we have of the term revival and what true revival is and how it connects to the word Goshen. I tried to teach this this morning during my mic live, but the Wi-Fi was very weak. And sometimes it isn't that I want to do the Bible so that the Wi-Fi is weak. I'm not able to communicate the message properly. So I gotta wait till I get to the right location when the Wi-Fi is strong so I can communicate my message. I want you to write down for a topic tonight, Goshen and the true meaning of revival. Goshen and the true meaning of revival. In the city of Patterson, there about, about a year ago, maybe about a year ago, where there was a street in Patterson called Goshen Avenue and there was no street light or no street sign. I reached out to Councilman Sayre, and he reached out to the city. And uh, I used to pray on this block called Goshen Avenue, which is right by a charter school, because Goshen reminds me of the Egyptian town where the Israelites lived at during slavery times, during the Moses era, that when the plagues and the curses came, they hid out in Goshen, that was their hometown where the slaves lived at, while God was bringing judgment upon the Egyptians. And not one plague, not one sickness, not one disease, not one disturbance happened to them because they was living in Goshen. Goshen is symbolic of redemption. So it's quite amazing that in the city of Patterson, out of all the streets up by Main Ave, up towards School 9, those in Patterson understand what I'm talking about, there was a uh, street that had no sign on it. Hello, Steve Gray, my son. Thank you for your seed you sown. I appreciate that. Thank you, Clark. Thank you, uh, Jared. Thank you, Tom. Uh, uh, Charlotte Jones, Fish, God bless you, Constance, God bless you, Jimmy Davis, strong man of God, so glad you stand on the word of God in spite of political uh, persuasion, yeah, I love, I love Jimmy, J Jimmy Davis, so, um, and I told Andre Sayer, the councilman, I said, listen, there's a, there's a signpost missing on that street, he went and he called the city, and they put up two new signs, Goshen Avenue, right by School 9, and right by a charter school, did you know within three days there was a bomb, some a gas explosion exploded mm -hmm. on that same street and people survived. It could have been uh, tremendous, but God protected the lives of people on Goshen Street, Goshen Ave, while the block blew up. And I really believe because I was praying in Goshen Avenue, God gave me a prophetic word. And Councilman Andre said, Congressman McDuffie, could you believe that the day after we put that sign up, that weekend, I think within less than seven days, mm -hmm. an explosion hit. I think the devil did not want that sign to be put up because that devil doesn't like to see this sign, Goshen, which is the place mm -hmm. of divine protection against sickness, disease, against tragedy, against terrorism. When you hide that in Goshen, you are hidden from the plague, you're hidden from the curse. I'm going to look at two scripture references to the town of Goshen. I'm going to show it to you from the book of Genesis, where Joseph was told to bring his father to live in Goshen to escape the plague of poverty, not having enough, the spirit of famine, uh, escaping the system of seed time and harvest, which was put on hold for, for the next five years, but was able to lo relocate to the spirit of Goshen or the town of Goshen so that they might be saved from the plague or the, pla or the from the plague. Now, I'm going to show you uh, Goshen in two different spots, and I'm going to also show you the true meaning of the word revival and what we have reduced it to. So this is Reverend Michael D. McDuffie holding Bible study tonight quietly for a few minutes, for about 30 minutes, to encourage you to study God's word and apply these principles so you can rise up and be fearless in the face of terrorism, the threat of bombs, the threat of car accidents, and all types of stuff the enemy puts up against your mind. 
Get up every day and say to the Lord, thank you for placing me in the secret place called Goshen. That's the place of divine protection. You can't stop the plagues from hitting. You can't stop the devil from attacking. But you can determine where that devil attack at. You can determine that when he comes to hit you, no weapon formed against you should prosper. If you operate in the spirit of Goshen and understand the purpose of revival. I'm going to show you that we have actually deduced and reduced the term revival down to a feeling or a three night experience. Churches are famous for events. We love events. Come to Sunday morning service. Come to the three night revival. Come to the all day prayer meeting. We love events. We are good at events. We're just not good in process of journeys. We're not good at a continual program that will last for 30 or 40 years. We're not good at transforming society and culture outside of doing all night prayer day. We don't understand how to connect, how to network, how to put our resources together, how to block vote, how to stand for principles and faith-based movements versus trying to endorse a candidate. We don't understand none of this stuff. And this is why the church does not experience the true meaning of revival, which means to bring life. What good is it? In the Bible, the book of James says, what good is it? You know, if you say someone, uh, go in peace, be blessed and have faith. And you got these world's goods and don't bless that's a waste of time. Faith without works is dead. So folks who claim to love the Lord, love Jesus, get saved, become a disciple, and you're not producing any works. You know, you're not transforming your community. You're not creating new jobs. You're not bringing new wealth into your, into your society. I wonder what good are you? What good are you? What I love about the two scriptures I'm going to show you, both of them deal with economic development. You got Goshen in the book of Genesis, chapter 44, 45, when Joseph, of course, is allowed to be restored back to his family. And he tells his brothers, go get my father, bring him from Canaan and bring him to Goshen. This is a land that's, delicate, that's delegated to us by Pharaoh. I'm second in charge. God has raised me up to be a father of the Pharaoh, which was like a pastoral ship, an influential, an, an influential one over Pharaoh. Pharaoh has placed me in charge of his house. I'm the manager, I'm the steward over all of his stuff, his billions. And number three, I am the governor over all of Egypt. This is a this is a triple net. I've been triply blessed. Now because of that, I got a favor with Pharaoh, go get my dad, move him from Canaan, and bring him to Goshen, which is a piece of land, a piece of property, a town, a vicinity inside near Egypt, right in the vicinity of Egypt, where you can eat the good of the land so you can escape, watch this, the poverty, escape the curse, family is restored. And you want to see that when someone finds Goshen or you're on your way to Goshen, your spirit becomes revived. I want to show you this. I'm talking about the title Goshen and the Spirit of Revival. God bless you, uh, Miss Nelson. God bless you, Johnson. God bless you, Williams. God bless you, Abraham Harrison. God bless you, Joshua Green. God bless you, Laquan McCray, my spiritual uh, grandson, because Pastor Tim is your spiritual dad. I want to show you something in Genesis. Hello, Joshua, my cousin. In Genesis, the 45th chapter, I'm reading out of the uh, out of the uh, Hebrew Greek Bible, and I may mess up a couple of words, but I want to show you something which is kind of deep. He says uh, in verse 45, he said to him, uh, he said, "God has made me a father to Pharaoh, Lord over all his household, ruler over the whole land of Egypt." Harry, go get my father and tell him, here is your son Joseph. God has made me Lord over all of Egypt or governor over all of Egypt. Come down to me. Don't delay. You will live in the land of Goshen. Uh, I think Evelisa says Goshen. I like that. Goshen and be near me. You, your children, your grandchildren, flocks, herds, everything you own. I will provide for you there. Now watch this. The, pro the provision is no longer in Canaan in this season. You have to switch and move over the Goshen. Stop trying to tell God where to bless you at. Some folks are in Canaan, want God to bless them in Canaan. And God wants transition before he bless you in this season. I know you used to see time and harvest principle. I know you knew, I know you used to name it and claim it, nab it and grab it, prophesy. I know you used to every week, the every yearly revival or the word of faith group. Uh-uh. Stop falling in love with patterns and things God did before because they were successful before. Follow the new move of God and what God is doing in this present season. What he says, Dr. Mary Joshua, what he says, Joshua, my cousin, what he says, uh, Jolanda, he says, 
Go get my father from the land of Canaan because that place right now is under the subjection of poverty and a curse. To escape the curse, I need you to come over here and live in Goshen. I am the steward over it. Pharaoh put me in charge of this is the land. I want my father and all this stuff to come over until the plague passes. And there's going to be five more years of just a rough season of famine. So move from your place. Move from your Canaan and move to your Goshen. Sometimes because church folks are so locked into, tr into tradition or how God used to do something, you know, uh, the three night revival, the all night prayer meeting, you know, all fast meeting. I call it city wide revival. We, we use things. We always go back and revert back to old patterns that God used before when God is doing something totally radical and different this season in, in Genesis chapter 44, 45 and actually 43, 42 through 45. There is a famine. There's a seven year famine and the only people to escape the famine were those that had prophetic vision to see the famine was coming. So Joseph had the ability to interpret Pharaoh's dream to warn Pharaoh who's the head of all the land that a famine is coming. But while there are seven great years, store it up. Get an investment plan. Start saving now. Before the house market crashes in 2008, buy up all the property in 2007 and hold on to it. So when the market began to change, you can sell property. So whoever has vision to see into the future can make preparation for the future plagues. See, because America got her head so far up her behind and she's so kissing uh, the mark of the beast and the dragon, she can't see prophetic vision. There are people who put their political views above biblical truths. That's scary to me to hear people talk and say they say and I say to people, what, what, what does the Bible say about it? And people will swallow their Bible to be accepted into a political party. And I'm calling on all political parties. The Bible and your faith rules and regulations rule over any political leadership. Any. When you bring a policy to me or you talk about the poor, you talk about lifestyle, you talk about family, I'm going back to the Bible. And I'm not letting it go. But when there is a famine in the land or when there's an up and coming plague coming, the church have to have prophetic vision to see where does God want us to be while the plague is here. Now, let me give you a couple of notes about this teaching. God has a couple of ways how he is God. And I want you to get this Audrey Bean Green. God bless you. And Joshua, I want you to explain this to you. God has the power to completely demolish a devil to disintegrate them. God got the power to send devils into pigs. God got the power to send devils out of town. But the question I always ask, mm -hmm. if God don't send them out, why is he allowing them to remain? Because he uses them in spite of their evil to get us into a place of promotion. Joseph brothers sold him out. That was evil. They told his father he was dead. That was evil. They sold him to the Midianites. That was evil. They took his colored coat and put goat blood on it. Told his father he was dead. That was evil. Evil, evil, evil. Devil, devil, devil. Satan, Satan, Satan. Lucifer, Lucifer, Lucifer. But here's the deep thing. God allowed it. God allowed the plague to come. God allowed the famine to come. Now, sometimes God can stop a famine. You can speak to a storm, tell it to shut up, and you can shut stuff down. But every once in a while, there are some things that God just allows to play out. This famine was for seven years. Seven years of plenty and then seven years of negative famine. And seed time and harvest is not working for these next seven years. So Joseph got prophetic vision to start storing up corn and grain. So all the other surrounding towns who was ignoring Pharaoh and Joseph was forced to come to him. Watch it when God starts shutting down your other system that you was used to. Because God will force you to move from someplace to someplace else because he got greater things on his mind. He don't care if you're Baptist, Presbyterian, Word of Faith, Charismatic. If your blessing is in Egypt and you so stuck on staying in Canaan, you might die in Canaan. And I know there are some preachers and some pastors who fall in love with old systems and they will go down with the ship unless that unless you are smart enough to get off the ship and get on a raft. There were about 1,500 people 
who died in the Titanic crash. The Titanic when the ship was sinking. But those who got on the rafts and got away survived. And there's some people whose ship is going down. That's not the system that God is using in this hour. You're trying to use a system that God used in 2012 for 2019. And God, that ship is going down. So God will bring something to an end to force you to move directions. And I watch God do this all the time. Don't fall in love with the system or the pattern that everybody is used to. Because when God allows a famine to come, he forces even the seed time and harvest principles not to work for a season. Now, ain't that something? Every time I go on TV, so a $58 seed, so a $60 seed, so a $100 seed. That works. But then sometimes God will shut that system down to force you to do something totally radical and different. In Jacob's mind, Canaan is the promised land. I'm a living Canaan. I'm a dying Canaan because this is the land that God promised us. Yeah, until the hunger, until those hunger pains kicked in, until you ain't got no uh, beef, got nothing to eat, fish is drying up, and you all just sitting there looking at each other dying. They was forced to go to a land that they did not desire to go to, and it was headed for Goshen because Goshen is going to. Become the hometown that will protect them during this plague and during this destructive period. Let me teach some of y'all this tonight. Prayer is also where God leads you to place your head and lay your head until the plague passes over. Some of y'all want God to bless you in the spot you used to. When God is really transitioning you over to another spot and to another place. We don't like to make moves. We don't like to return to college. We don't like to return to business schools. We don't want to work on our business plans. We're used to our nine to five jobs. See, when you start moving from what you used to do towards Goshen, you're preparing to get ready for a plague to come. Sheila Washington says, I need to hear this word tonight, Mike. I am so ready to move. Sheila Washington, move, girl. God gave you a degree. Move, girl. Don't wait. You ain't getting no younger. Go for yours. I'm prophesying that you find that place of Goshen. Goshen is the town and the place that you have to transit, move towards so that you are protected against the curse, protected against the up and coming plague. And some people don't know how to move. We're so used to the system. Well, I claimed it before. I fast all night. I sung my song. If I, I sing that Jesus work it out 10 years ago. Guys, I'm not singing Jesus work it out. I'm talking about you work it out. You go out there you do something different. We don't like to change because we use the patterns and traditions that got us over 10 years ago. Got us over five months ago. But what God is doing in this season, he is closing down Canaan to force those in Canaan to come towards the Egypt land. Because you think it's all about you and all God wants you to do is get near someone who need to be near you. Stop trying to avoid evil. Stop trying to stay away from stuff. Don't touch this. Don't touch that. Stay away from this. Stay away from that. I kind of find out that God is after everything. Everything that is a thing, God wants it back as a thing under Christ's leadership. And the church has to know how to go get it, how to reclaim it, how to restore it, how to return it. The prefix re means to do again. So anytime God used the term re, it means it was yours before the enemy stole it. Go and get it back. But you have to know how to do it. You got to be careful that you start prophesying. I'm moving towards Goshen. And in the New Testament, and our today's kingdom understanding, Goshen is not a physical place. It's a mindset. It's a spirit realm. It's a faith place. It's get up in the morning and say, Lord God, protect me in the spirit of Goshen. I was driving around someone's house, and I won't tell you the name because they were really close to my family. And I was claiming that the spirit of Goshen would protect this house. Did you know a robber tried to break in their house and could not get in? And just that week before, I was driving around claiming Goshen protection over that house. You can shut an enemy down before he tries to break in. You can shut cancer down before it forms. You can stop aneurysm before aneurysms come. You got to learn to speak Goshen. And sometimes when I hear people complain and fuss, I change the subject because it does not help you out when you believe in God but some for God to do something. You can either feed your fears or feed your faith. I am an equipper. And some stuff I'm going to shut you down because your emotions is killing your faith. You got to keep your faith high. You got to speak to the mountain. You got to believe that God is doing something. Look what it says here in Genesis chapter 45. And this is Bible study. It's not SITU. He says in verse 10, You will live in the land of Goshen and be near me. You, your children, your grandchildren, flocks, 
hers, everything you own, I will provide for you here, not in Canaan, but in the Egypt land. Goshen is in Egypt, okay? So that you won't be affected by the years of famine that got five more years to come. Here, your own eyes see and the eyes of my brother Benjamin that it is my mouth that speaks to you. This is Genesis 45 verse 13. Tell my father who thinks I'm dead, that's Michael McDuffie translation, how honored I am in Egypt and everything you have seen, quickly bring my father here, down here. Then he embraced his brother Benjamin and cried and Benjamin wept on his neck and he kissed all of his brothers. That's the same brother that sold him out. The same brother said he didn't know what he was doing. The same brother said he was stuck up. I've been there. I already know your brothers will do you wrong, do you dirty wrong. But you got to be professional to still kiss them and to embrace them and to forgive them. And God will promote you in Egypt in a place you're not supposed to get promoted. Good God in the morning. He kissed all of his brothers and wept on them. After that, his brothers spoke with him. 16. The report of this reached Pharaoh's house. Joseph's brothers have come, and Pharaoh and his servants were pleased. Pharaoh said to Joseph, tell your brothers, watch this, tell your brothers, here is what you to do. Load up your animals, go to the land of Canaan, take your father and your families, and come back to me. Now this is Pharaoh. This is a heathenistic king. Why do folk always feel saved folk are the only one that can bless you? God can make a sinner bless you. God can make the Illuminati bless you. God can make someone who is an atheist that only believe in God bless you. God, who cares who brings it as long as God sends it? We are so religious, so rigid. We only think God blesses folk on Sunday mornings in church circles. That's too small. Church folk ain't got no money. Money has come from people who are atheists, who are in Hollywood, who are NBA stars, who are billionaires, don't care about God. There must be a transition from that wealth and put you in a spot where Goshen is waiting to bless you. Not Canaan, but Goshen. You could be in the wrong location, which affects your allocation. You can be in the wrong location that can affect your allocation. But church folks are so busy just claiming property. This is mine. I claim it in Jesus' name. And God is transitioning you. Uh, Sevilla, I need you to stand forth, man. You're in the middle of a battle I went through at Madison Avenue in 1996, 1997. Same thing about that. Agra land, illegal church in the house. I'm so glad that the mayor has favor with you. And keep praying Psalms 91. Keep praying Psalms 27. Do not attack them in the flesh. Listen, Pastor Jose Sevilla. Don't attack no one in the flesh. Don't talk evil. Don't talk to the newspaper. Just start speaking the word of God over your church and ask the enemy to confuse the enemy. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, Pastor. I see the articles in the paper. And I went through the same thing in 1997. All right? So stand, Jose, Sevilla. Psalms 91, Psalms 27. And ask God to scatter your enemy. I'm in agreement. Sheila Washington says, Pastor Jerome Lee preached this word on Sunday. He said, people leave their stuff behind because they're convinced themselves that it doesn't matter for them, that God didn't want them to have it. The devil, the devil is a liar. That's right. And God is going to restore what you lost. God is going to, get, get, God is going to put back to you everything you've given up. Well, look what it says. Pharaoh says, go to Canaan. Take your father and your families and come back to me. I will give you good property in Egypt and you will eat the fat of the land. You know what the property was? Goshen. Moreover, and this is in order, do this. Take wagons from the land of Egypt to carry your little ones and your wives and bring your father and come. What are wagons? Listen, listen. The wagons are vans, trucks, buses, transportation systems, Mercedes, I don't care, whatever, what, Coupe de Ville, you know, whatever the vehicle is, Pharaoh is supplying it. Go get your dad. I'm going to show the real meaning of revival. Revival is more than just folk getting saved, giving life to Jesus. Revival is to rescue people from the spirit of poverty and from the spirit of the plague of famine and deliver them from sickness and disease and restore families escape the spirit of poverty and put them in a goodly place where they can raise their families. That's the true meaning of revival. And if revival doesn't contain those factors, then you got a low level, ball level of revival. Revival is much more than that. As a matter of fact, the word revive means to, to give life, to bring life. Look what it says here in verse 21. The sons of Israel acted accordingly and Joseph gave them wagons as Pharaoh had ordered and gave them provision for their journey.
To each of them, he gave a set of new clothes. God about to give Samuel some new clothes, new wardrobe. But to Benjamin, he gave seven and a half pounds of silver and five sets of new clothes. Benjamin always got the most because he was the younger brother of Joseph. And uh, anytime you raise up a generation, you prepare to give them more than what you had. You get that later. Verse 23, likewise to his father, he sent 10 donkeys loaded with the finest goods Egypt produced. Look at it. Egypt taking care of Canaan. I thought Canaan supposed to take care of Egypt. Not when God is, not when God's doing it. God will make the enemy bless you. God will make the devil bless you. I don't know why folk can't talk to sinners. Why can't we talk to people that always talk about Jesus? We can't hold conversations. We don't know how to strategize. Don't fight the enemy in the flesh. Fight them by spirit, but then have normal conversations. Because God is going to take the spirit of Goshen and the true meaning of revival and bless you economically, economically and help you to escape the spirit of famine. This is very powerful. Uh, my, one of my spiritual daughters, Fish, says, Thank you, Pastor. When you spoke, your emotions are messing with your faith. I need that. That's right. Shut your emotional man down. And speak your faith. And I, and I run the people who want me to get emotional, but some folks, I'm not taking emotion because you know too much word. You keep on talking. You know Jesus. I watch you preach before. I watch you prophesy. I watch God use you. And now you sound weak like everybody else. I'm a punk. I'm going to say, get the punk out of you. Stand up and stand up. You said God's word is the truth. Then stand up and talk like it's the truth and walk in that thing. Hello, Susan. All right. Talking about the true meaning of revival in a place called Goshen. And in this story here, Pharaoh is saying to Joseph, send all my stuff and go get your father. Church folks are broke. That's right. And that's why God got to go outside the church to take care of the church. We need some Pharaohs. Pharaohs cut contracts. Pharaohs give you checks. Pharaohs give you land. Pharaohs give you stuff that the church don't have. The church is living off people's tithes and offerings. And the average amount of salary amongst black families is disgusting in comparison to white wealth. So folks are living off the tithe. A tithe of what? A Section 8 check? A tithe of a welfare check? A tithe of a collegeless people? A tithe of what? People are barely making their bills meet now. But you tell them to tithe. Give offers. I got no problem with that. But where are your college programs? Where are your business connections? Where are your credit repair? Where is your job creation market? Where is the teenage program? Where is the children's ministry? Where is the ministry you go outside the four walls? Where is your connection to the school system? We don't want kingdom ministry. We want church as usual. And that system, God is going to flip it and force you to move from your Canaan mindset to an Egyptian mindset, to a place you're not used to, to a style you didn't expect, and to sit with people you wouldn't choose to sit with. That's what God does when God starts to move. He will make you talk to someone you want to talk to. You have to work with a, a pastor with braids in his hair who you thought you would never work with. See, that's what God will do. God will make your enemies eat their words. And ain't nothing funny than watch God make people eat their words. And you can't say, I told you God was going to do that. Don't say it. But back of your head, you're like, look at I told you God was going to do it. I just know how God does this. That's why it's always key to remain humble. Because you don't know who God's going to use to bless you and how God is going to use other folks you least expect. I'm talking about Goshen and the true meaning of revival. That's the name of my Bible study tonight. Goshen is a little land, a little property, kind of a large spaces property inside of the land of Egypt that people are going to go to to be protected from the plague. And I want you to start claiming Goshen over your family, over your house, over your children. Because sometimes you cannot stop the plague from coming. You can't stop people from building bombs, trying to blow up uh, Times Square in New York. But you know what? If you claim the spirit of Goshen, you can stop the enemy before he tried to set the trap. Did you know that the bomb that the man tried to blow up those people... He actually blew himself up. You know why? Because there's a church called Times Square Church that's binding up those devils. That you're shutting it down before they come. You got you to gotta shut that devil down before he come. You got to get him and say, Lord God, I'm in the spirit of Goshen. And I'm protected against the plague and the curse. I stand firm. You got to speak that thing. Goshen is a mindset. It's the word you speak. It's an invisible bat shield. Forget Batman. Batman got this from Goshen. When the plague comes, it's supposed to bounce off. Look at Sheila Wash, my spiritual daughter. That's why Trump is successful. He knows how to get his from whatever it is. He's friends with Putin for a reason, getting it from the ultimate enemy and comfortable with it. Sheila Washington, P 
people can't receive their truth because we got our heads so stuck up a political party. You better look for truths and look for rules that people are doing. I don't care about who, who's Republican, Democratic. I don't care what title you got. I'm looking for success rules. I'm studying the camp of the enemy and I'm studying the camp of others and I'm looking for the principles of Goshen and the principles of true revival. And whenever I see biblical truths that I'm taking the information and I'm running with it. And you set a mouth for it. Sheila, you say stuff that folk are afraid to say. And that is why Trump is successful. Whether you like him or not, whether you can't stand him or not, I don't care about whether you like him or not. I'm looking at how this guy's operating and doing some crazy stuff. Glory be to God. Even the guy that upset Mr. The, the Democratic guy that upset the guy last night, he, he, he went on this grind. He worked hard. He won a seat in Alabama. That's against natural law. You know why? Because he worked hard. Stop thinking everything coming because you shout Jesus' name 10 times. You gotta give him walk. You gotta get a degree. You gotta work a plan. This thing, you gotta pray as if everything dependent on God, and you gotta work as if everything depends on you. Stop thinking things are walk up you and knock on the door and say, here's a job for you. Get out there and grind. Get out there and believe. And stop asking folks to feel sorry for you because after a while, it's not gonna work feeling sorry. Goshen is the place of divine protection. Go get your dad. Now, watch how deep this is. In verse 25 of 45th chapter of Genesis, it says, So they went up out of Egypt and into the land of Canaan and came to Jacob, their father. They told him, uh, listen, Joseph is still alive. He is ruler over the whole land of Egypt. And the Bible says that Jacob was stunned at the news. He couldn't believe them. So they reported to him everything Joseph had said to them. But it was only when he saw, watch this, when he saw the wagons which Joseph had sent to carry him, from carry him that the spirit of Jacob his father became revived see the word revival became alive which means when he saw the wagons when he saw the transportation when he saw the materials and the economic development that his son sent him who's supposed to be dead his spirit became revived isn't it amazing he didn't look at the Holy Ghost he didn't start quoting Torah scriptures he saw a physical wagons outside he saw money he saw economic development he saw transportation that was sent from pharaoh through joseph to his house he said i don't believe y'all you can't tell me that joseph is alive he's been dead for 14 years and the brothers kept saying no he's alive i don't know what they said about was you know we actually set the whole thing as our fault but he's alive i don't believe you until he saw those wagons pull up he says, oh my God, look what happened when the wagons pull up. 45, verse 25. I read it again. 27. So they reported to him everything Joseph had said to them, but it was only when he saw the wagons which Joseph had sent, which Joseph had sent to carry him, that the spirit of Jacob, their father, became revived. Israel said, which is the same person, Jacob and Israel is the same. Hello, Cynthia. Hello, Pastor Sharon Huntley. Israel said, enough. My son, Joseph, is still alive. I must go and see him before I die. Now he's talking about life, revival. Let me tell you what revival really is. And please write this down for Bible study. Revival is not because a preacher comes to a church and do a three-night revival. We do this in, in circles. It sounds cute, sounds nice. But the true meaning of the word revival is to bring forth life. And if I'm going to die from poverty, that's not life. If I can't get a job, that's not life. If I can't take care of my kids, that's not life. If my unemployment check is $328, my bills were 1000 a month, that's not life. Uh, if you trick me to believe my son is dead and I'm walking around with a psychological problem thinking he's dead, he's really not dead, uh, that's not life. If I think my sons were supposed to protect their younger brother and they sold him out to slavery, that's not life. That's psychological warfare. Stop reducing and deducing God down to three night revivals. True revival is when the wagons come to get you. Write that down. What wagons? The wagons that will move you from Canaan to Goshen because in the present season there is death and poverty all around you. Some of you watching me tonight, and I'm speaking prophetically as a prophet, God wants to move you. He wants to transit you. He wants you to take a leap of faith and take that leap and try something different. Stop doing the same old thing and want different results. God wants to transit you. 
switch up. God wants to move you. Goshen, here I come. I like that fish. You got to start saying, Goshen, here I come. And Goshen is a transition. It's the move that says, God, where shall I go that I can get out of the spirit of poverty and the spirit of not having enough and the spirit I'm always struggling? Sometimes it's not the resource. It's your location. Sometimes it's not the uh, allocation. It's the location. Once you get the proper location, the allocation come. So you expect God to come through this way and God said, I'm coming through Pastor McDuffie. So you expect it to come through T.D. Jakes and guys, I'm coming through Pastor McDuffie. You thought it was supposed to come through one in the bottom. You said, but it's coming through Pastor McDuffie. So you got to know where it's coming. You got to know also where is your Goshen at? Because sometimes the Goshen can represent a physical place that God is telling you. So you took the job based just on money. So the job pay you 60000 a year. So you took that job. You didn't even talk to God. But the other job was 45000 but you built, but you chose the job based on money alone, not knowing if you took the one for forty-five thousand, you would have ate with the boss, and the boss would took you home and gave you a check for a million. So you can't box God in according just the salary. You have to be willing to say, Lord God, whatever Goshen is, I want to be there in the time of famine. And keep this in mind: this is not a normal famine. This is a seven-year famine where there's no plowing and there's no sowing and there's no reaping. Which means that all the animals, the healthy animals, now live in Egypt. All the other folk animals died. There's no rain. This, everything dried up. There was a famine that came. God allowed the devil to bring the famine. But that famine forced the folks to move from Canaan to come to Egypt, which is really an evangelistic program. <laughs> now, I'm going to give you something to blow your mind. God's going to start closing down some churches on purpose because we're used to only one model, 11 o'clock a.m. to 1 o'clock on a Sunday morning, and we've gotten so comfortable, God can start shutting down local church buildings, shutting them down to force them to get out to their community. We want to live, breathe, and just die in Canaan. When God trains you in Canaan to go into Egypt to win the souls and win the world. We've gotten comfortable living in Canaan, don't want to touch Egypt, stay away from Egypt. And that is not the biblical kingdom evangelistic outreach message. God wants you to move. All right. Thomas, Thomas Tamina says, must know where you are signed, who you are connected to. You got that right. You got that right, fish. Goshen, here I come. So you have to be willing to pray for direction. All right, now I'm coming to the end of this. I know I went more than 30 minutes, but I'm making a point here. And here's the point don't be so locked and tied into patterns and traditions or even your denomination if it violates what God is doing in this present season. You know, there was a uh, there was a time where um if you call Pastor McDuffie, I go to every prayer meeting, every revival, every party someone call me. Now I'd be like, wait a minute, that's not what God telling me to do. I know you got a prayer meeting at 11 o'clock. God's not leading me that this season. God got me focused on something else. I'm raising some other younger ministers who don't have collars, who don't have bishops, who don't have all this stuff. I'm going after a young lady who got a call on got life, but she don't look like a preacher. I'm going after the guy that got the record. I'm going after the woman of God who people look over because she's not perfect yet. I'm going, see, that's the group that God's sending me towards. And so I have to say no to Canaan and say yes to Goshen. And someday, and keep this in mind, Goshen seems to always be something that is temporary. It's not permanent. It's what God is doing just in that season. And sometimes folk have been so rigid and won't let go of Canaan. God said, let go of Canaan just for a few years, just for a year, just for some, just let it go so I can move you towards Goshen to protect you so the curse can pass over so I can restore you to your family and take care of you, nourish you, and then send you back to Canaan. See, we don't know the correlation, the correlation between Canaan and Goshen. See, Canaan is for the place of promise where Israel is supposed to live. The promised land is Canaan, the state of Israel, Palestine, we call it today. And inside of that state is a little city called Jerusalem, which is the size of New Jersey, which, of course, they're fighting over all day between the Israelites, the Jews, and the Palestinians. They fight over this piece of property. And, uh, and I still believe God has promised the natural bloodline of Abraham to rule that state and that capital. But the most important thing is to rule the earth through Christ Jesus. But listen to this. 
But when God is moving by his spirit and God got a bigger plan than you have, he can shut everything down for a season and force you to go to a place that you are not used to. My, 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 my best friend, Sheila Washington, says, people keep asking me what I'm going to do with my degree. Where are you going to go next? I refuse to speak anything because I don't want to limit my possibilities. I can't possibly imagine all God has for me. Girl, you sound like a daggone prophetess. Sheila Washington, sing, act, take pictures, come out the whole box. Don't be rigid by religious folk. Your greatest enemy are religious folk who are stuck in a Canaan mindset. God can take you out of a Canaan rigid form, move you towards Goshen, and let Pharaohs bless you, and then return back to Canaan with more stuff than when you left. <laughs> Ooh, let me finish this. I'm going late tonight. And I, and I know I went late tonight, but I was making sure I was going to do my Bible study tonight. And I know my eyes are I look like little beanie eyes because I'm tired. But I want to make sure I kept my word on this. And in chapter 46, it says that Israel took everything, which means Jacob. And he owned with him on his journey. He arrived at Beersheba, or Beersheba and offered sacrifices to God, his father. All right. And the sacrifices mean worship. He took time to worship. See, when you are transitioning from Canaan and headed towards a new town or a new life, you got to take time out to worship God, quiet time, meditation time, prayer and communion with God. I've learned and that in my toughest season, I took my car and went, I went driving for an hour in prayer. I drove around properties. I drove around people's houses where my enemy lived there. I drove, in a, I drove around their house and cast the devil out. Spirits that was in my church trying to destroy me. I drove them out. I drove them out of town. I'm trying to tell you in the spirit realm. I'm trying to tell you I operate in this thing. You can control the spirit realm if you understand the spirit of Goshen, Canaan, and the true meaning of revival. When you think of the true meaning of revival, revival really means you get your life back. You get your hope back. Jacob was living death. He thought his son was dead for 14 years, who he favored and loved the most. Number two, there was famine in the land, nothing to eat. He's growing old. He's just walking around, just waiting to die. But once he saw those chariots pull up and saw all those goods and services and heard the prophetic word that his son was alive, then the Bible says his spirit became revived. That means true revival is when you restore back to your family. When economic development comes and you're able to avoid the spirit of famine, that is the true level of revival. I wish church get a hold of that. I wish the local church would get a hold of that. Revival is more than giving an altar call on a Sunday morning or Wednesday night and give, you, give your life to Jesus. After the life has been given to Jesus, you got to go out and leave your Canaan circle and go into Egypt and minister to Pharaoh, minister to Herod. Minister to the same brother that sold you out. You got to show a type of love, which means a commitment to remain constant with someone until you see a break. That's what love really means. And this is what it means to have what I call true revival and operated in the spirit of Canaan. Let me show you this. So when Jacob goes into worship, the Bible said that God gave him a vision. And this is what God said in the vision. In a vision at night, God called to Israel. He said, Jacob, Jacob. He answered, here I am. He says, I am God, the God of your father. Don't be afraid to go down to Egypt. He said, I am God, the God of your father. Don't be afraid. It is there that I will make you into a great nation. I was like saying, huh? Listen to this. I'm going to make you a great nation inside of Egypt. But I thought the promised land was Canaan. When God gets into the picture of the kingdom, God can bless you anywhere he wants. He can bless you in hell. God can bless you in Hollywood. God can bless you, let's say, right in the front of an atheist. God can make someone who's a Muslim take care of you. Stop limiting God. Just don't let go of your Jesus. Don't let go of your conviction. Stand firm. I will bring you, look, and he said, not only will I go down with you to Egypt, but I will also bring you back to Canaan after Jacob has closed your eyes. I'm going to bring you back to the promised land. So I have not forgot my promise to you in Canaan, but there's some transition. I need to get you to another location for allocation. I need you to avoid this plague. I need you to restore back to your family. I'm going to restore you back to your son. I know you thought your son was dead and gone forever, but restoration is coming. 
Sheila Washington, you got a son on the other side. God going to restore you back to your son. It has to happen. This is all biblical. So Jacob left Beersheba. The sons of Israel brought Jacob their father, the little ones, and their wives in the wagons Pharaoh had sent to carry them. They took their cattle, their possession, which they had acquired in the land of Canaan, and arrived in Egypt. Jacob and all the descendants with him, his sons, his grandsons, his daughters, his granddaughters, all this was transitioned from Canaan all the way, of course, to Egypt. And they're going to stay in a place called Goshen. So Goshen becomes the place of transition, becomes the place of protection against the plague. It becomes the place to escape famine, sickness, and disease. Goshen becomes the place of restoration of family members, aunts, uncles, cousins. God is going to cause everything to come together if you're willing to make some transitions. 2017 for Pastor McDuffie has been a year of transition. I have expanded my ministry from Patterson to Wee Hawkin. My whole ministry at church has been deduced and reduced to a handful as I rebuild from the ground up. Uh, we're transitioning for building a full pillar college, a whole hocus and Tom Eastwick schools. We're expanding that. The I am initiative is growing. Uh, I'm counting a new relationship on my social media page. My ministry goes all the way to Pakistan. I had to make some transitions and willing to give us some old relationships. Some folks walked away and thought I missed God. You know, Pastor Mike ain't following the spirit. Every time he tell me, he talking about the kingdom. That's right. Kingdom, 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 kingdom. King, kingdom, kingdom, kingdom. I'm going to keep talking about it because this is why the church is so backwards because you don't talk about it. You don't teach about it. And this is why when plagues come, when explosions come, when uh, attacks come on the American soil, you're supposed to be able to escape it. The Bible says in Psalms 91, when the plague come, we supposed to be dwelling in the secret place of the most high God. Canaan and Goshen could be a place of the secret place if there is where God wants you to be at the time the plague comes. God bless you, Jose, my number one fan. So the Bible says here in verse 28, I'm getting to close. Give me five more minutes. Jacob sent uh, Judah ahead of him to Joseph so that the latter might guide him to the road to Goshen. Now, keep in mind, Judah means to be praised. So what you see in Genesis 46 are two weapons you need when you're headed for Goshen, worship and praise. Worship is intimate, see, talking to God face to face, and praise means I'm praising you for the thing that you have already done and that you're about to do. So worship and praise plays two major keys in your transition towards Goshen. Thus they arrive in the land of Goshen. This is 46 verse 29. Joseph prepared his chariot and went up to Goshen to meet Israel, his father. He presented himself to him, embraced him, and wept on his neck for a long time. Then Israel said to, to, to Israel said to Joseph, Now I can die because I have seen your face and seen that you are still alive. Joseph said to his brothers and his father's family, I'm going up to tell Pharaoh. I'll say to him, My brothers and my father's family who were in the land of Canaan have come to me. Now watch this, and I want to show you this in my clothes, and I have to come back and do this later to finish this up. The men that are in my family, listen, they are shepherds and keepers of livestock. They have bought their flocks, their herds, and all of their possessions. Now when Pharaoh summons you and asks, what is your occupation? Tell him, your servants have been keepers of livestock from our youth until now, both we and our ancestors. This will ensure that you will live in the land of Goshen, for any shepherd is really abhorrent to the Egyptians. Now, let me close with this, and I'll just paraphrase the last few minutes of what I just read to you. And I'll come back and do part two probably sometime tomorrow, because this is just Bible study. This is not SITU. Joseph now is operating as an economic developer. He is training his family what to say to Pharaoh. He says, Pharaoh has given you permission to bring all your flocks and all your stuff to a place called Goshen. Now watch this. Before you came here, we already got enough of grain and corn to take care of you. But being that you're bringing stuff from where you're at, you're going to give you can give us extra stuff. So not only do we have our stuff, we also have yours. Let's pull our resources together in the land of Goshen and let's make this thing work. But here is the trade and here is what you call the bartering service. We're going to give you the land of Goshen to live. 
But while you're in Goshen, let's, let's use those skills you had since you was little. No one can beat at being a shepherd. You got the gift of shepherding. I mean, you can grow sheep. You can go fly. You can do everything in Goshen that you was trained in Canaan. All you got to do is move your location and you'll get new allocation. That's what Goshen means. So it's not a place to be lazy. It's to move your work skills and your talents and your gifts from one place and put it over here. And once it finds its proper location, new allocation is released. So you might be having a gift to preach, a gift to dance, a gift to sing, but you're in the wrong place. But when anyone God place you on social media or put you on the new leadership or you connect to another person, your stuff takes off. And this is why some folks can't get free because they're too bound to an old plan. They want new things doing the same old way. Not happening, baby. You got to move from Canaan to Goshen because the spirit of famine is in the air. And my boy Joseph was smart enough as a governor who knew how to cut deals. He said, now, when you stand before Pharaoh, you tell Pharaoh that we'll work your land. We're going to grow your land for you. See, Pharaoh's a businessman, too, now. I'm not only interested in being nice to Joseph's family and friends because Joseph becomes my spiritual dad. It's all about business. When you get to Goshen, work my land, baby. Grow my flock. Take care of my land. Let's produce more because it's all about territory and power at the end of the day. And this is why church folks are broke, busted, and disgusted because they think because they prayed all night, they don't have to do no work. Get your butt off the prayer meeting and get to work. Get some stuff moving. Hello, Brenda Teller. Hello, Fla uh, Flavio. God bless you, man of God. Sheila Washington says, and I love that you're speaking to Christians to stop separating themselves from folk not like us. Church folks, where are my spirit when they act as if there's no body to anyone who isn't in the church? <laughs> I've been given more opportunities than any others than church folk have ever offered. Real talk, location, and allocation. You got that right. You know, it's like we just can't hold a conversation with someone unless they say it like us or act like we crazy. Sometimes folks want to talk about Jesus. Just want to have a conversation. Just talk about life. How's your job? How's your family? How are your friends? When you start talking to them, they start liking you. You just open up and talk about the Lord. But we, do, we, don't have, we, don't, we don't understand that. Let me close. Hello, Bonnie Moore. God bless you, Bonnie, woman of God. Love you. Miss, love you and you and your sister and family. Bonnie, let me just say this to you. And let me, and let me close with this. Goshen not only was a blessing in this story, but Goshen also was a blessing in the book of Exodus, the eighth chapter, when the plagues were falling all over all the Egyptians and the Israelites who were slaves were living in the town, the same town of Goshen, and no plague came there. No animals died. That was a divine supernatural place. I told you your location is your allocation. They was hiding out in a place called Goshen. Goshen is a spirit of protection so when the plagues hit, when God is bringing judgment, when God is allowing the devil to hit. You are protected by the blood. About 3,000 people died at 9-11. It probably should have been about six, 7,000 people. The other 3,000, 4,000 got protected by the spirit of Goshen. Folks got away. Folks got out. Some folks call out of work. God got a certain group that the enemy cannot take. I'm trying to tell you, can't kill them, can't destroy them. It passes over. The Goshen mindset is a place of Psalms 91. I believe Psalms 91 is a Goshen prayer. It is the secret place that God tells you to go to that you can be protected when times of transition. 2017 the past in my life have been a place of finding my Goshen spot, my sweet spot. So now I live between Patterson and Weehawken. Now I got a college in Patterson. Now I got an I am a minister program that's spreading throughout all of Patterson and outside of New Jersey. I got a church ministry in Pakistan. I'm meeting new people. I'm connecting with other ministries outside my immediate circle. There's a new group of ministries being raised up. You have no idea who they are. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in secretly meeting with them. New come out singing in 2018. There's another group of people. See, no matter what you do to Joseph, if he knows the Lord God Adelaide with him, he'll find his Goshen spot. And number two, his spirit will be revived. And God will have him be an upper realm of development. That is why I'm in. That's why I'm in. And I pray for all those watching the Bible study tonight. As you fix your mind, don't get so locked in the cane you can't move towards Goshen. Goshen is a place of family restoration. It's a place of divine protection until the plague pass over, until the family family comes to an end. It's also a place where you use your gifts and talents in a new in a new location you're not used to. The 
that ground will look just as good as the other ground if you work to get to that place. God gives you so much power as you need to that place. Thank you for watching one of my videos. It's definitely my Bible study. I know I'm over 30 minutes. I believe I'm learning this. I say this over and over. It's not always what you do. It's where you do it. I love you. God bless you, Bonnie. God bless you, Bonnie. God bless you, Peter Walker. God bless you, Ben. God bless you, Fabio. God bless you. Thank you for your time. Thank you.